G'day guys, ZD here. Recently, I traveled all the way to Malmo, Sweden, the home of Ubisoft Massive and the upcoming Tom Clancy's The Division. I was able to get an unprecedented three hours of hands-on gameplay time with the game and one of the world's first opportunities to straight up record some freeform gameplay. In this video, I want to take you guys through some of my experiences with the first hour and a half of gameplay. I'll tell the story of our playthrough and I'll share what I've learned as well as some of my opinions. I have tons more footage to share so you guys can expect more specific videos from me in the coming days in the lead up to the PC beta on the 29th. By continuing to watch this video, you have hereby agreed that this is Xbox One footage and I have been a PC player for the last five years and that you are going to be okay with my horrible, horrible aim. Okay, good, we got that out of the way. So, for the unacquainted, The Division is an online RPG shooter. It's pretty important to make the distinction in that this is an RPG shooter and not just a shooter like Call of Duty, Battlefield or even other Tom Clancy games like Rainbow Six. The Division is something more akin to Borderlands or Destiny, though with a decidedly different theme and setting. This game takes a heavily tactical third-person cover-based shooter style of gameplay and meshes it with RPG elements of character progression, loot, abilities and even floating damage numbers. The Division is set in the near future in New York, in the midst of a societal collapse. Unknown forces have weaponized a deadly virus and spread it via banknotes during Black Friday sales. It's really the perfect plan. You play as one of many sleeper agents dispersed among the regular populace, living regular lives until activated during just such a crisis as this. Your mission is to help restore order to the chaos of rioting and looting, and to try and discover what has happened. I began the session at level 4 being helicoptered into New York. I think it's quite likely that there's like maybe a small prequel or tutorial area outside of the city that Ubisoft won't reveal until launch, or maybe until the beta. I had a chance to create a character, male or female, including customizing skin tone, hair, iris color, adding markings, tattoos, and accessories. It's been said that this is not all of the character creation options that will exist at launch. What we had to play with in terms of character creation in this hands-on test was pretty simple, so I do hope that we get more chance to change the preset faces at least at launch. When we landed, I had a chance to swap my weapons from a decent list the developers have started us off with. There was everything you'd expect, shotguns, assault rifles, sniper rifles, LMGs, and submachine guns. We were also able to add and swap mods, including magazines, scopes, attachments such as laser sights or hand grips, and silencers. Take note that each gun has its own specific damage stats, DPS, and bars representing things like accuracy, recoil, reload speed, and so on. Each of the mods would provide some sort of percentage impacts to weapon stats, or in some cases other utility, such as reduced threat generation on silenced weapons. There is also a number of armor slots that provide damage mitigation amongst other benefits. These benefits were essentially randomized RPG gear affixes. You'll notice all my items at the start here have green backings, and that's the second tier of rarity and power. Essentially it goes white, green, purple, and orange for legendary. There are a wide range of potential buffs, but we'll get more into that in a later date. Suffice to say that you'll be trying to hunt down the right equipment with the right stats for your build. This point is pretty important to me personally, as you guys can probably tell from the types of games I usually cover, a good item hunt is really important to keeping me around long term. It's hard to tell exactly how much at this point, uh, how engaging the loot hunt will be, but the potential is there with item rarities, mods, mod rarities, and item affixes. Gear-wise, for this first stretch of the game, I decide to specialize in close quarters combat, opting for a shotgun, a submachine gun, and I take the ballistic shield ability. These abilities you unlock as you level, and there are a range of things such as scanners, explosives, healing stations, and portable cover and more. Early on you can take just one of these abilities, and later on you can get two basic and one ultimate ability. There are even ability modifiers you can use to change how the ability functions and improve its effectiveness. I should mention here that there are no classes in this game. Your role in combat is determined by your choice of gear, abilities, and your playstyle. If you want to play close combat, then you can take close combat weapons and perks. If you want to snipe and provide support, then you take the relevant gear and perks. Once I was set up, I joined a party with two other people, one of whom was a developer, to show us the ropes. From there, we got a situation report from a nearby NPC, and we synced our maps with a nearby map board. These gave us directions to a main mission to lift a siege on our planned base of operations, as well as a series of side missions and points of interest in the local area. Looking around the awesome 3D map of New York, you can see different side missions, encounters, and safe house locations, as well as the red PvP dark zone. When you hover over a mission for a while, you get an audio clip explaining what it's about, and you or a party member can set a course to follow, which shows up as a floating yellow line above your head. 
And so at this point, I think I want to talk a bit about the menus and UI. They look sexy as. <laughs> They can be quite a bit of clutter at times, I think, especially in PvP later on with player names floating around and covering up the screen, a lot of floating damage text and things like that. But this hovering UI and 3D map and really modern tech style displays just feels and looks very cool. To be honest, it just kind of geeks me out. Like, I can't really evaluate yet how effective the UI is going to feel long term or whether it's going to be annoying. But I think at the moment I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it. It's really cluttered, but it looks great. So that's a weird kind of, like, uh, opposing set of feelings there. So we decide on a nearby side mission we want to check out, and before we head there, we just kind of explore a bit and let it all soak in. The world is really quite immersive feeling, with really good, like, weather details and rubbish floating around and strewn around cars and things like that. It helps that the city is designed to be a nearly one-to-one -one representation of New York as well. Basically, they take the streets of New York and fill them with bodies, rubbish, and general chaos caused by riots and looting, and you have a pretty scarily immersive environment to explore as a result. And the fact that you see a bunch of non-hostile regular people walking around, some in pain, others scavenging, and all this kind of really drives home this mid-crisis setting. Initially, when I sort of saw the game, I thought, oh, this is a post-apocalyptic game, you know, cool, like, I like that theme. But this is something different here. This is like this actual idea of a mid-crisis game, which is something I haven't really seen before. It's quite an impactful world to be in, because you can easily feel how real and possible all this is in the actual real world, which is a little scary. I felt genuinely bad for an injured NPC that walked up to me begging for help, and I gave him one of my very limited supplies of medkits. I got a little bit of XP, and I felt a little bit better about myself. <laughs> After a good couple minutes, we finally stumbled upon someone who looked a little less friendly, a couple of guys looting a body. There's no real law here anymore, there's like the joint task force which is trying to restore order, but they don't really have control of anything. So I guess that's what we're here for. So I uh, sneak up, take cover on a nearby pillar and open fire. The guys reel back from the power of my shotgun blast and one tries to pull a stun grenade but drops it because of my well-timed shot and it detonates at his feet. I walk up and grab what they're after, an ACOG scope. I don't know if this little encounter was random or scripted, but we happened upon it by chance and it wasn't on the on the map itself. We could have completely missed it if we had gone a different route. But it was a great first encounter to show what sort of state the city is in. A little further into the city and things get much more heated way more quickly. We get word that a supply drop has landed off course and looters are going for it. There's a lot of guys up here and cover is limited, so I decided to try out my Ballistic Shield. This thing is pretty effective, it provides complete damage absorption from the front until it breaks and it allows you to advance and apply pressure to enemies. While equipped, it also increases your threat, helping you draw the aggro of enemies in PvE. The trade-off is, of course, that you can only use it with a sidearm, and I only have a basic pistol at this point, so I can't do too much damage. We take out the first group of rioters pretty easily, but quickly learn that this was just a distraction and the supply drop is being flooded by more rioters. We rush over there and clear the area and take up positions to defend it. After we've successfully defended the supply drop, we close in on our target side mission. A bounty has been placed on Michelle Mason and her lieutenants. We close in and take our positions, and the developer shows a feature where you can initiate an on-screen countdown on a target. This allows you to coordinate with your teammates on when to start your attack. Our position is pretty good, but I'm charged by an aggressive baseball bat wielding enemy, and I seem to be a magnet for stun grenades as well. Thankfully, I was an acrobat in a former life apparently, and I have no problems dodging in and out of my cover position. We move through the rest of the area fairly efficiently, dispatching our enemies. 
As CQB, my role is to use my shotgun to take out melee enemies and anyone trying to flank. And when we need to press forwards, I use my ballistic shield to pressure and draw our enemies' attention. This proves to be a pretty effective strategy, and we cut our way through several waves of enemies, eventually finding ourselves at Michelle. It's at this point that you'll be reminded that this is an RPG. Bosses are heavily armoured and take many magazines of concentrated fire to take down. This is pretty normal in RPGs, right? Like you wouldn't blink if and it took a long time to kill a boss in World of Warcraft or something like that. But the realistic setting of this world and the human enemies can make this seem pretty jarring at first, and I've seen a lot of discussion about this on the internet already. I realise more and more as we play though that although it's a bit weird that humans take, you know, so many bullets to kill, this is essential to the tactical gameplay and RPG elements the Division is trying to offer. Long time to kill means cover, positioning, flanking, and gear stats are all very important. Killing enemies in 2-3 to three shots would make it all about run and gun, and I don't think that's really what the Division is aiming for. We explore the city for another half hour, doing another couple side missions, one to rescue a stranded private, and one to reactivate power within a block. We then finally decide to proceed with our main mission and reclaim our base of operations. We know that the base of operations is under siege from whatever criminals have taken over Madison Square Garden. We don't have numbers and they don't seem to have a leader, but the JTF is stretched thin. This has to be our first priority, Agent. Get our base back, and we'll go from there. Intercepting JTF radio traffic. Taking small arms fire! Small arms fire! Who would have us in their sight? JTF, hearing this? Please respond! Tracking signal. Analysis complete. Uploading coordinates. The base of operations is like your second character as far as the RPG elements of the games are concerned. Much of what you'll be doing out in the world will be to expand or improve upon your facilities, add new wings, improve your shops and so on. Your base of operations is unique to you and is instance, so we split up with our party for a little while and explore and activate each of the hub computers in our own hideouts. From here we learn that we have a choice of three main missions that we can take on in the nearby area, and each will provide an upgrade opportunity for our base of operations. We can rescue a doctor, contact a joint task force officer, and recruit the services of an electrical engineer. The devs told us that most of the time the game's PvE is going to be extremely non-linear. We'll be able to explore and take on side and main missions in whatever order we choose. I certainly got the sense walking around that we could go anywhere, and the dev that we're actually playing with, I thought, I thought they'd be kind of like holding our hand, forcing us to go certain areas, but they didn't actually stare us in any particular direction. We were able to go wherever we want, and if we kept heading in a direction, he didn't stop us. I did have a pretty good sense of freedom from this, restricted only by the fact that I'm sure I could wander into somewhere that I wouldn't be well enough equipped for, or high enough level for. And I quite like the idea that you can find yourself out of your depth as well. I think good RPGs should always allow players to test their limits. So once I'd poked around the shops and explored the hideout, I met up with my fire team outside. We decided to head into Madison Field Hospital nearby so we could get the help of a doctor. We are kind of running out of time a bit and it was the closest. Here I learned that you can actually set the difficulty of main missions like this, kind of like with hard mode MMO dungeons. The difficulty makes enemies tougher but increases your rewards and can even add or change item rewards. Since we'd been doing pretty well up to this point, we decided to give hard mode a try. We've got a lot of hostiles inside, agents. They're holding Dr. Candle and her staff. We need those personnel back at the base so we can get the medical wing functional. We head into the hospital and quickly find some enemy resistance organised around some escalators. We take our positions and try to take on the superior numbers. I'm rocking an assault rifle instead of my shotgun now, and I start to get a feel for the very real recoil in the game. Short controlled bursts are the order of the day, otherwise you'll find yourself wasting half a mag above your enemies' heads. 
The hard difficulty enemies are definitely tougher, but with good aim and positions, we're able to pick them off. A couple well-placed grenades certainly helped as well. We stopped by security to patch in our base of operations to give us some intel, and we learned that some enemies are patching themselves up in the field hospital area. It's a wide open room filled with hospital beds, and once we get in there it's evident that shit's about to go down. We try to find good positions and count our targets. I open up with a bang and we start the fight. These guys have as good cover as us and the fight is tough. The enemies swarm forwards, call for backup and even start the flankers. Additional hostiles detected. After a while my allies are forced to fall back, I hold my ground for a little while longer, but I get flanked from the right eventually and decide to drop back to the entrance as well. Cover is pretty poor here at the entrance and we struggle to even hold it as one of our allies goes down. From here, just the two of us hold the entrance until the number's thin and we're finally able to regroup. This is a pretty intense fight and looking back, I think that movement and positioning was crucial. Us moving up and being more aggressive earlier on would have given us better positions and then given us better options to fall back to later on. Candle and her staff are still upstairs, stashed in the kitchen at Kobe's. So having cleared the field hospital, we take the elevator upper floor and find ourselves in a firefight across an open balcony. The level design in this game so far has been pretty on point. The firefights have all felt different with different enemies and vastly different areas to fight in. This area becomes more about suppressing fire and ranged accuracy, as we both cannot move up on each other, and we both have pretty good cover. We try to set up some good firing angles, and slowly take them down.
From there on, we move into a dining area, and this is very different as well. We have good cover, but some very aggressive enemies charge at us. I take a baseball bat to the face. <laughs> Watching out for your buddies and focusing down any melee enemies should definitely be a priority. I make pretty good use of my ballistic shield in here to push forwards and finish them off. The escort party's taking heavy fire from the roof. They can't move until you get up there and take down that gunner. We're pinned down! There's no way we'll make it across alive unless someone can get up there and take out the big gun! All yours, Agent. The floor cleared, we head up to the roof to take down some enemies that have our JTF buddies pinned down. We get the jump on them and open fire. As they are being attacked from two sides, this should go pretty well, but our cover is actually pretty lacking and it's a tough fight. My allies find themselves overwhelmed and they go down. Warning. Agent on your team is down. Requires assistance. The boss of the mission is in my sights when I'm finally taken down and our first PlayStation ends. This was a really good intro hour and a half for me. It showed a lot of what the game has to offer and I was really impressed with the PvE. Initially I was mainly excited about the PvP aspects of the game and I thought the PvE would just be filler or a bit of a write off, but I can see now that there's real potential for this game to have some difficult and engaging PvE content as well. And this was only low level gameplay too, I can imagine higher level gameplay, and we got to experience some of that, will require some better teamwork, especially on hard mode. While I have some concerns about things like endgame and repeatable content long term for this, it seems like the base idea, the actual combat, the RPG elements, and the engagements, the level design, all of those things are looking really good, and I think this game has a lot of potential as a result. 
I'd also just like to thank Ubisoft for covering my flights and accommodation for this trip. It's unlikely that I would have been able to go and get this hands-on footage otherwise. So, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I did also get a chance to play some high-level gameplay in PvP, but that will be for a later video. I'll be doing a lot of coverage for The Division in the lead-up to beta and during the beta and in the lead-up to launch. So make sure to subscribe to catch some more. And of course, if you guys have any questions about my experiences, feel free to ask in the comments below. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.